Hello and welcome to all of our Gold viewers who are here with us today. I'm Kristen Schwartz, licensed midwife and MC here for Gold. And here at Gold, we're getting ready of our early years symposium. And with me here is one of our speakers for the symposium, Ben Kingston Hughes. Welcome, Ben. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's lovely to have you here. And you will be presenting on the playful brains, the neuroscience of play. And before we get into that, tell us a little bit. First of all, where in the world are you? Uh, I'm in uh, the UK, um, United Kingdom. Uh, I'm in somewhere called the Midlands, right in the middle. So the, about the furthest away from the sea that you can be uh, in the United Kingdom. So that's where I am now. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. So let's also talk about your professional background. I want to hear a little bit about that, how it came, where you are now, what you've been doing and how that all came to be. Right. So um, 30 plus years ago, um, I had no idea what I wanted to do as a career. And uh, I was actually really struggling in life. I'd, I'd actually been kicked out of my uh, out of university. I was doing my first degree. Uh, so I failed that. I was sacked from jobs. Um, I now, in hindsight, know that my ADHD was a factor because I was diagnosed a few years ago, but um, really struggling. And then I found a job working with children. And um, I went there for six weeks for, to do a, a summer bits of summer work and stayed there for 13 years and it changed my life. Um, it was first job I wasn't sacked from first job where I was stimulated all the time. I wasn't bored. I wasn't, it wasn't repetitive because it's always different working with children, isn't it? Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I then that gave me the confidence to put myself through another degree and actually pass it this time. And then on to do an MA as well and various other qualifications working with children. So um, yeah, it absolutely changed my life. And then, shortly after about 13 years um a national charity were on the lookout for uh, people to work at strategic level and it's something i've become fascinated in is about changing policy so not just working with children but actually getting people who make decisions to sit up and realize that children are important and so i got a job uh, working at strategic level for a, a charity all across the, the united kingdom and i was basically uh, one lovely job i had was to try and get um in the uk we have no ball games signs so in a, a bit of green land that looks like it would be perfect for ball games local residents want to stop the children playing so they have these signs put up and of course because the local residents are adults and they get to vote the children's wishes don't really come into it so one of my jobs was to try and persuade local authorities to say no children are important take those signs down and let them play with footballs and you know volleyballs and whatever so um, but i also managed a lot of projects in a lot of different areas especially deprived areas working with lots of children of different ages so um several years after that um we had a change in government in the united kingdom and, and a, a government that, that realistically didn't value children so a lot of funding was cut to a lot of these projects and so i found myself um, made redundant out of a job and that was the point where I realized the only way I could keep doing what I loved doing was to do it for myself. So I set up mm -hmm. a company uh, called Inspired Children and the rest is history. We've been working with vulnerable children ever since, as well as delivering training for schools mm -hmm. and nurseries. And again, we still do some of the strategic work. We sit on panels and focus groups. I do keynote speeches. And, and uh, as you said, I'm an author as well. I've written a book about play. So that's it. That's where we're up to modern day. <laughs> Quite a lot. It's uh, you're wearing. Yeah, sorry. Long, <laughs> no, long answer no, to a short wonderful. question. <laughs> it's wonderful because you know you've done so many wonderful things and uh, for the betterment not only for the children you work with but also on a policy level and and getting really the attention also of the voting adults and such uh, such wonderful work. So that's fantastic. And um, in you know in the company Inspire Children, you're working with vulnerable children with ch children, but also yeah. training adults training uh, people who work with children speak about that a little bit and where they can find you because some of our viewers might be interested in some of your training so yeah. where where can can we can they find you well the the training side of it is was it was almost accidental because um the children's sessions is very very little funding for stuff like that so actually we found that some of our children's sessions were were like making a loss and and we were struggling with budget and so what we did was we started the training and it's been amazing it's been one of the most you know i'm so privileged to be able to speak to huge groups of people and just put children first that that's the the message is you know yes we're talking about neuroscience and yes we're talking about you know changes in the brain and the biochemistry the really fascinating stuff but the the message really is we need to put children first 
because that's what's going to help them have the fulfilling lives that they need and the best start ever. So, um, yeah, so I train schools, nursery settings, after school clubs, youth settings. I work with adopters and fosterers. So pretty much anywhere there's a need. And in terms of how to access the training, um, obviously in the UK, if you're in the United Kingdom, then you, you can email me and I'll come to your setting, wherever that is, whether that's a school or a nursery. In the rest of the world, uh, I will travel, but also there's some really interesting online sessions that we deliver. So um, yeah, just have a look at the website and would happily do a webinar or um, you know, or a pre-recorded training or yeah, however, whichever format suits you the best. And I specialize in play. So any aspect of play from imaginative play to risky play to boisterous <laughs> play, outdoor play. But we also do quite a lot of stuff on behavior and yeah. vulnerability because of course we find ourselves working with children who've had a lot of vulnerability and a lot of maybe trauma in their lives so a lot of it is to do with the best ways that we can support children to have the best childhood possible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, your presentation here at gold is titled playful brains the neuroscience yeah. of play right i mean play is really important for the development right i mean and we have research proving that so talk to us a little bit about that not give too much away because we want yeah, our viewers to come yeah. to the presentation but like it, that is an important part of development right yeah well i think i i think we're becoming aware of how important play is because it's no longer just one kind of uh, sort of obscure bit of research what we're looking at now is it's a growing concordance of evidence to show that it's never been frivolous it was never just something children do to pass the time it's actually a absolute cornerstone of development and in fact in the talk that i'm giving for you guys it's it's everything from from you know uh, emotional well-being um, all the way to life expectancy i mean it has implications for all of that so i think what we used to we kind of used to know that it was important but i don't think that's good enough anymore i think now we need to be absolutely categoric that play is profound essential and life-changing and I think that's what the research is telling us, that it is mm -hmm. not an optional extra for childhood at all. It's a key mechanism that, you know, crossing a broad spectrum of development that, that you know, is an essential part of every childhood. Yeah, it's beautiful and, and so profound and such an important message um, to, to really deliver because, you know, play is often seen, especially in school settings, as something that is almost frivolous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. now we have a little yeah. play break or we do a little, but it's not seen as something that is really essential for the development no. of, uh, of the human being, you know, no. um, to, uh, and also to function later in life in society as well right so no, no. um it, is it ever too uh, too late for a child let's say you know you said you're working with vulnerable children is it a, there yeah. a point where you go like oh you know the, 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 the we have lost so much in the beginning we can't uh yeah. keep up or or it, what do you see there my my personal view is it's never ever too late mm -hmm. There are studies from a few years ago, like neuroscience studies that were showing that, you know, damage to the brain caused by anxiety get to a certain age. And then, you know, that that is that's always going to be a factor. But even those studies have been called into question now. And actually the neuroplasticity of the brain, its ability to heal and change is phenomenal. So I, there's always a benefit. And we work with, you know, children who are very young, but we also work with teenagers who've had some of the most, you know, really traumatic bringings and yet we're seeing magical things happen to them and it you know um life-changing so no and i also i do a lot of work with parents um so we're, we're doing sessions for parents to help them play more in the home because they need to rediscover it as well and you see the benefits of the adults as well you know all of the biochemistry that we talked about on the training session that you guys have got it's there it's not just children and you see adults running around and on the evaluation forms they're going oh my goodness i did not know i was going to enjoy it this much because they're just rediscovering play so no never too late always always time to play yeah rediscovering play you brought up something so important because my next question was really because you know the adults um are also you know if they didn't experience play in a form like that was yeah. you know encouraged or were taught from a very little young age to sit still and and you know um how can they interact then with children and and foster that and if they see the joy in this too so um, it is never too we are never too old to play no, right is, is that the message no. to adults yeah sometimes <laughs> it's it's just a confidence thing i mean if you get a group of parents who are less confident one of the reasons they're not playing is because they've not you know they're younger they've not had that same level of play you show them how to make 
a den out of some old cushions and a duvet and suddenly they're sat in a den and there's something really powerful about sitting in homemade dens and forts that makes you feel happy anyway and they're thinking yeah i can do this i, I could take the cushions off my sofa i could do this um, one of the examples that we're sharing on the, the course i'm doing for you guys is is making magic potions and it's such a simple idea isn't it and that's something that you know parents can go oh wow this is not difficult it's not weird this is this is something that we can all enjoy together and it's incredibly powerful and quite often with the parent sessions you see the difference in the child and that's yeah. that's the brilliant thing a few weeks later you'll see the child's confidence increase because the you know we're not asking any parent to be superhuman and play with their right. children all the time and you know, because we've got long busy lives right. all we're saying is just prioritize play a bit more just give them you know, 10 minutes, turn the telly off a little bit more, go to the park one more time a week. Whatever you can do is going to benefit those children. And then three weeks later, you'll see little Emily, a more confident child because mm -hmm. they're now playing more and they're having more family time. It's such a simple beautiful. premise, but it works really well. Yes, beautiful. We need this message to go out to you know, all parents, educators, schools, yeah. policymakers everywhere in the world. Right, Ben? <laughs> yeah. Well, my um, my son's fifteen years old, and he's um, he ha he's had school anxiety himself, and he's he's mm -hmm. dyslexic, which which we mentioned briefly on the training course. But um, he's just started helping me out. He's volunteering on the sessions, and that's been a, a bit of an eye opener because he doesn't get it at all. So he's playing around, and and uh, last year he played around with this young lad who they were doing piggyback races, they were doing obstacle courses, jumping off stuff, climbing stuff, having a brilliant time. And at the end of it, my son just went. So is that your job then? You just play <laughs> and you're just proper teenager. But my son doesn't know is just how profound that right. moment of play had been for that child. And in fact, the child in question, when he was first adopted, he was an adopted child, oh. had been morbidly obese because his early childhood had been kept strapped into his pushchair and not allowed to move. Oh. So my son wasn't just supporting the child and giving him play. He was actually validating the very type of play that he'd had res restrained or restricted from him for his early years. So it's, it's yeah. not just a big deal, is it, to a child like that? It's everything. And, it's you know, everything. so um, hopefully as my son gets older, he'll understand that I do a proper job. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not, uh, yes. Not just Absolutely. Oh, this is wonderful, Ben. I can't wait for your presentation and for all our viewers to watch it and learn from you and take really and you're doing in the presentation. It's not just it's not a lecture. I can say that so much. It's really hands on. You're showing some examples. You're doing some exercises. You get us, you know, inspired and and, and moving there as well. So uh, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you so, Thank much, you so much, Ben, for being here with me today and uh, for your contribution to the symposium. Thank you so much. Cheers. And now for our viewers, uh, you know, if you would like to find out more information on the Early Years Symposium and on Ben's presentation, we invite you to go to goldlearning.com. They will find out more information about Ben, uh, the presentation and the other presentations in the symposium as well. And we hope to see you there. We have a live keynote presentation coming up as well um, that is open access available to everyone. So uh, check on the website, sign up there. It's free. And then um, you can also so decide to get the rest of the package to be able to enjoy Ben's presentation as well. Thank you, Ben, again for being here. Thank and you so thank much. you to our audience. Bye-bye, everyone. And play more. <laughs> <laughs>